I'm Graham Cox here with the Czech News team, and we are here to talk all things Victoria Film Festival coming up this weekend. And joining me now, the head of programming for the festival, Kinga. We're talking movies today. We're talking festivals in a very different year, a very different time. Uh, what can people expect from the 2021 experience coming up? I think anything. Thank you so much for having us. Um, so the festival starts this Friday. And I think, as always with the festival, you can just expect the unexpected. Uh, we have a great selection of films from around the world. And um, as much as the festival is like online this year, I think it's going to be as fun as usual. And we hope people will enjoy it and join us for 10 days. Now this, again, this festival doesn't come to overnight. You guys have been working amid a pandemic to get this on, but you've been able to pull it off. Uh, was there anything that stands out as more of like the most difficult thing you guys had to do in the virtual world or were you able to do this pretty easily? I, I think we're trying to figure out how to make this experience enjoyable for people because we all love being at the theater as I'm now at our big theater, which is unfortunately closed. Uh, so uh, this was, what we are trying to do, and I hope we did succeed. It's a different experience, um, but it's fun. I think, you know, being flexible, you can now watch your film anytime in your pajama. You can dress up, pop that champagne, basically have fun and enjoy all the films. This is our motto. Those are some very, very good tips. I got to ask though, uh, as you're going through this programming process and picking the films, et cetera, you're seeing them, do you get to come into the theater all by yourself and watch from there? <laughs> Who knows? Maybe. <laughs> so there you go. Maybe that's uh, your benefit here too. I would wink, but I would wink if I could. Yeah. <laughs> so when you're looking at uh, the roster as a whole this year, um, you know, what can we expect from the movies that, uh, that are going to be presented? So for sure, it's a very different, the films are very diverse and inclusive, which we always try to do. Um, we are, you know, the independent film festival. So for sure, sure, you'll find something that you would not be able to find on Netflix for now, maybe in the future. Uh, so this is our, our, always our main goal to bring something that uh, is very unique to the festival. And um, this year we kind of, because, the, you know, last year was so weird, we kind of decided to kind of broaden our selection and we added some um, hidden gems and we added also some films that are like not your typical festival films like this giant Chinese mega production Skyfire with Jason Isaacs um, and we added also some smaller films from Europe that are so good but would never make it to maybe North America at least for now and um, so we kind of had fun and I hope people will be able to enjoy and see the results. So when, uh, uh, I know this is going to be a general question, but uh, when somebody is looking at the roster, there's going to be, you know, 50, 60 films, they're, they're overwhelmed, not sure where to start. Uh, do you have any advice, um, sort of generally, of, of how to pick your movies, how to go about uh, deciding which ones you want to settle in on? <laughs> yeah, for sure. So we have this very cool section on our website, uh, victoriafilmfestival.com. It's called Festival 2.0, and then you can go, and there's a different selection of films. So you can find my top six picks, for example. Uh, you can film action films, you can find a like, different selection of films that would for sure help. And yeah, or just like watch something that you would never ever pick. Because I always encourage people to watch something outside of their comfort zone and just maybe close your eyes and pick one film and see if you like it or not. And if not, then come talk to us. <laughs> well, that's uh, a perfect segue. So uh, maybe getting outside of their comfort zone, maybe they can go to the, the 2.0 section of your website, but we are going to try to outline four films today to maybe give them a, a little help with their decision. Maybe it guides some directions and, uh, and uh, picks people's curiosity. Yeah, Shiva Baby is a great debut from a Toronto filmmaker, Emma Seligman. It follows a day in life, a day in life of a young woman called Danielle when she attends a Shiva, which is a Jewish funeral for her parents. And 
during this one day she runs into her sugar daddy into her like ex-girlfriend and it's all a mess but it's fun and light and i just rewatched it last night and i loved it so i would say go for it and it's also based on the director's um personal experience because she grew up in a jewish uh, community in toronto so it's just very fun film with a substance um yeah so I would definitely recommend this one okay so what uh you know what, what was your kind of what was the thing that stood out the most in your eyes after watching this film you know it's like always impressive when you see a film from a, a person filmmaker she made a short film with the same name which is a great film and then you just can't wait to watch her like next film because it's just like the acting is great it's so natural and you know, it's, I think it's an hour, 20 minutes, but I it just, it's a, such a quick watch, which is always a good sign because you are so into it. So it was like, yeah, it was a very like light film, but with substance and um, I still think about it sometimes. So that's always a good sign. <laughs> Wait, mom, what? who died? Oh. I'm excited to get this, this next one. Film number two, I Human. Um, this one, the description to me looked very interesting. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, so this one gave me chills. You're setting the stage for something that transcends us. A new form of life is emerging. Artificial intelligence is rapidly reshaping the world. It's going to be everywhere all the time. It's going to hear everything. It's going to be connected to every single camera and the planet. AI will ultimately be the best thing ever to happen to humanity or the worst thing ever. It's a documentary from Norway directed by an award-winning documentary filmmaker, Tonya Hessenshai. Uh, she made a documentary before about drone. I think it was on Netflix. And um, it's this documentary exploring um, the technology of artificial intelligence. Uh, I'm not a techie person and I loved it. It's a tiny bit scary, but I think it's very important to watch it. And it's just like, it shows in a very great accessible way how the AI, um, technology will like, impact the global community, which I think is important. So if you're if you're into that or not, I think it's very educational yet fun. <laughs> well, <laughs> so I would recommend this as a like good duck. And I, I want to tell you the line when I read the description that uh, that got my gears turning was uh, it asked you, will your microwave be your your friend in the future or your worst enemy? Uh, so does it make you think, is it kind of eerie? Um, is it suspenseful? You know, what, what, what can we expect on that front? I wrote that line and that was, that's what I was thinking. I'm like, yeah, will it, um, I, it's suspense. It's kind of, um, it's, I call it like a documentary thriller because it's like a real life, mm -hmm. but sometimes you think, how is it possible? Like, you know, and we don't even notice the AI technology that's in our life, like lives already. Um, so for sure, it's something interesting to explore. In the world that we live in this year, this past year with the pandemic, we've relied a lot on technology, you know, things like Zoom and, and staying connected, uh, but all sorts of different things, apps to order food, etc. Uh, does, does, do you look at this film a little bit differently after having gone through a year where technology has been so heavily relied on? Oh, definitely. Um, and again, it's like, you know, mixed feelings because thanks to technology, like my family, my whole family's in Europe, so I can talk to everyone all the time. And we can have all these amazing, amazing filmmakers coming for Q and A's and joining us at the festival. Um, so it's, you know, I'd, I, will, I think we'll see. AI is going to be the most important technology in the history of the planet. Will humans actually benefit? Think carefully about this. We're basically building a god. What we're seeing now is like a train hurtling down a dark tunnel, and it looks like we're sleeping at the wheel. Film number three, the big hit. Um, and I'm drawn to this one as well, this description here. Uh, it's got the makings of a very interesting storyline. Can, uh, can you tell us about it? Uh, so this is the first film I booked for the festival, and I watched it uh, last summer, and I was like, we have to have it. Um, it's it's basically a story about this charming yet boisterous group of inmates um, who are led by Etienne, who is a past his prime, um, but enduring theater actor. And he has this almost like impossible task 
uh, to make them stage uh, Waiting for Godot and uh, play it in a theater. Uh, it's a great film. It's charming. It's fun. It's about waiting and patience and, you know, finding new hobbies, which is basically we all can relate to after the pandemic. So I would, it's just like light film uh, with some drama and actually a surprising endings, which I won't spoil, but uh, it's a great watch. Mais vous avez jamais travaillé avec des détenus? Si, un petit peu. Mais c'était des jeunes en difficulté qui avaient fait des conneries. Ah, d'accord. C'est pas pareil. Hein. Alors là, je m'appelle Étienne, je suis comédien. On va faire des sketchs, nous, monsieur. Bah ouais, nous, on va faire du stand-up. Les sketchs, c'est pas trop mon truc. Moi, je fais du théâtre. Mais c'est bizarre, on vous a jamais vu. T'es con, quoi. Il serait une star, il serait pas avec nous. Tu réfléchis un peu. <rire> grand auteur de théâtre du XXe siècle. De quoi elle parle, la pièce De deux mecs dans la merde qui espèrent des lendemains meilleurs. Ça vous parle pas, ça Je veux pas qu'ils se retrouvent en situation d'échec. Je suis là pour les tirer vers le haut. Oh, Vas-y, c'est rouleau ton truc. The description makes it sound like a very, you know, a simple concept, but a unique one. I, I don't think I've read and or can, can picture anything else like it. Is it kind of unique? Is it kind of different? It's very unique and also it's based on a real story. So um, there's this, like, play in Sweden, I think. And the director like saw it and made a film about it. So it was, it's based on a real story, which makes it even better. And also, we do have this year Q and A's. Uh, so there's an interview with the filmmaker that you can watch after watching the film, and he explains more about his process and how did he film this, uh, made this film, and uh, yeah, it's great. The public is saisi du Grand Théâtre. Je crois que vous allez faire une tournée. C'est pas pour eux que t'as fait ça, c'est pour toi. Et alors J'ai pas le droit d'exister, moi On va laisser passer ça, quand même. <rire> Étonnez-nous. Ça, vous l'emporterez avec vous. Personne viendra vous le piquer, ça. Uh, and that will leave us into our last film, number four. Uh, the, one of your featured films here, Fanny Lai Delivered, is the title. Uh, let's go. What's the, what, what, are we, what can we expect from a feature film hitting off the festival? So this is the last film we booked for a festival. And I was so sad because we almost didn't have time. And then miraculously, we were able to book it. So it's a star-studded uh, British period drama uh, set in 1657 in um, Shropshire in England. It's, it's great because it's period drama with a zest. So it's just, I also rewatched it yesterday and um, it's just great. And this year, our opening film. Um, so for all the lovers of UK films, go for it. That's the one to watch. She'd only known the land, the toil, Black Hill Farm from Eastern Edge to Western Wood. It was our world. Till the day the strangers came and delivered Fanny Lai from one life into the next. You say it's star-studded. Are these people who have uh, been on screen that we might recognize or, or you know, what's the sort of caliber of acting we're going to be getting? Uh, so, um, I hope so. So Maxine Peake, she was in 2018 VFF film called Fanny Cow. It was a big hit at, in 2018. And then uh, Freddie Fox, Tanya, Tanya Reynolds. I think it's if you see their faces, you will know who they are. And the acting is just impeccable. Um, it's just like not a boring period drama, basically. I must consider your eternal soul. <laughs> we are in pursuit of a pair of licentious heretics who did partake in profane display at the tavern less than five miles from this ground. <laughs> Well, I'm hooked. I cannot wait. I'm really excited for uh, for these four, but a lot of these other movies I've been reading about, uh, it all looks great. It looks like you guys have done a fantastic job making it virtual this year in the era of COVID, and I cannot wait. Thank you. I can't wait either. Thank you so much. <laughs> awesome. Year of hard work all culminating in this. Thanks so much for joining us.